Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome to the Weird Kids Show in the new studio. But that's not what we're here for today. Today, I want to talk to you about something I picked up a few years ago. Uh, I was in the Navy, I love everything nautical, and when I came across this porthole, this mirror porthole, it was a no-brainer, I had to get it. It was like 10 bucks, so I jumped on it. Uh, wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I knew I was going to do something. And so I sat on it, sat on it. Well, now I know what I want to do with it. I'm going to take this and mount it, do uh, my steampunk plate, riveted plates around it, and then I'm going to have a big old tentacle coming out of it, okay? So it's going to be a little bit of an involved project. It's something that's going to be able to hang on the wall, and it could give you the base of what you could do on a larger scale, like a facade or something like that. You know, you could go bigger if you wanted to. So today, we're going to start with the tentacle. Um, okay, so this could end up being a two-parter, maybe even a three. I don't know. I'm just going to run with it. So today, we're going to tackle that tentacle. Thank you guys so much for being here. Check this out. Alright guys, so yes, I, I found this at Goodwill and it was a no-brainer. I wanted to do something nautical with it at some point in time, although I didn't know what. So I had finally come to the conclusion, you know what, I'm going to make a wall mount, uh, something that goes on the wall, and I'm going to have this big tentacle coming out of it, and I want to mount it to a plank. So I got this here, this wooden plinth. Okay, so uh, I'm going to mount this in the middle, wherever the middle is, roughly there, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to cover this. If you guys watch my steampunk bottle tutorial, I'm going to do the plate steel with the rivets all throughout this thing. But instead of painting it a rusty metal, this time I'm going to go for a oxidized copper, like a true steampunk, which is a lot of it's copper and brass and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that throughout the whole thing. I'm going to mount this on here, and then from inside of the porthole, I'm going to make this big tentacle that's coming out, and it's, you know, twisting and turning and everything, uh, which is going to be fun. But being that that's the most involved part of this, this build, I'm going to uh, do the tentacle first. How am I going to do that? Well, the first thing I do is I got, you can buy big... Uh, bundles of this at Home Depot. This is called drop down ceiling hanger wire, and you can get a good sized bundle of this for under 20 bucks. Okay, and it'll last, it should last you for a long time. And you can bend it and manipulate it and stuff. It's great stuff. If you saw my uh, cyborg skull spider tutorial, I use this for its legs and stuff so you can see that it supports the weight of whatever you have there. So it's strong stuff. Um, so I'm using that for the armature of the tentacle, and then, uh, if you guys have been paying attention, I told you, every time you're driving down the road and you see somebody throwing a couch out and put it to the curb, whether you got to keep a trash bags in your, in the, you know, haul them around with you in your car with a can of lace all, go out and grab those cushions. Uh, throw them in a plastic bag, spray it down good with lace all, seal it up and throw, you know, all you need is the free foam that's inside those cushions, okay? Because this is going to be the base of my tentacle, all right? So I've got this piece of free foam from a couch that I had uh, saw on the side of the road, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this thing uh, on the bias, okay? I'm gonna start uh, real thick at the end and then slowly start to taper up. Now this is gonna be a rough cut just to get this thing out. We're gonna start getting finer. I'm gonna show you how I do that to whittle it down into a nice, clean round tentacle okay so i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna need that we're gonna need some liquid latex because we're gonna paint the finished tentacle with the latex and then the last thing we're gonna do is to paint everything but we're gonna get into all of this thing and uh like i said i don't know if this is gonna be more than one part but anyways this is fun i'm excited i'm looking forward to this so thank you so much for being here and let's let's do this thing guys see you in a second all right, guys, so this is what I cut out of that big piece of foam. All right, it don't look like anything now. Uh, it's the general shape, and that's all we want right now. Now what I do, and this can take a while, but uh, it's possible, and that is, we can see it's like square. All right, so I'm going to go down this sharp edge and start cutting away 
all right and just keep going around it and beveling all the sharp edges and what I'm also doing uh, by doing that is I'm shaping it all right I'm getting it in the shape of a tentacle that's gonna take a while but it's possible to do and so I'm gonna keep just cutting away cutting away you can cut in if you want some textures you might want to if you want to draw a line down the center with like a sharpie and do like cross hashes to have like little uh, corrugated like lumps and stuff like that you can do that by cutting with the scissors and just cut deeper in that little section there that's what it, that's what it entails guys it's just to keep going around and around and around shaping this thing all the way up the length of this thing and just keep shaping it so I'm gonna work on that it's gonna take me a while uh, and then I'll check back to you show you what, what we're gonna do next so hang tight guys and we're back okay guys so this is what I've come up with all right and I could still sit here and tweak it and basically like I said you got to start on one sharp edge and just keep working your way around working it all the way up to the top tapering it off at the end all right so now we have a tentacle but we can't pose it just yet you know we gotta wait until we get them wires in there and you might find when you do bend it you're gonna have little pieces that stick up like that and that's not a problem because we're gonna put this thing in the final position to make sure that it's clean enough I left it, I like the texture of it. I think once we put the latex on it and the suction cups, that it's going to make it look more organic. Um, so I'm digging that. Um, I'm happy with what, the, what we got here. Uh, I might find I might need to shave a little here and there when I put the wire, and that's what this drop down ceiling wire is for, is gonna go inside of this thing for the armature so that we can manipulate it, all right? But I don't want to do that first. The first thing that I want to do is I actually want to attach the suction cups. All right, so what do we use for suction cups? Well, uh, when I did one of my uh, earliest videos, I did a, a short little tentacle tutorial. Uh, and then I had built this big biocontainment chamber. And inside was an alien creature with all these tentacles with these poisonous barbs coming out of the suction cups. And for that, I used... Sculpey. All right, so let me show you how I make these Right here. All right guys, so here again Is these little Sculpey Suction cups that I made and I did that simply By Taking a ball of Sculpey and then rolling it Placing it, it's best to do it on a baking sheet when you do this so that you're already on there. You can put tin foil down, uh, uh, make it smooth. Uh, and then you take a ball sty stylus, or you could take like a bottle, uh, something that doesn't have like an imprint on it. Uh, you just look around your house, you could find all kinds of household things that would work for this if you don't have a ball stylus. And then you just simply press in the middle. I kind of turn it a little bit and you can widen it whatever and there we have it it's that simple now I have a suction cup uh, to show you what it's gonna look like decide which part of the tentacle is going to be the bottom with the suction cup uh, I am choosing this side and so that's what we're going to look like there. We're going to glue that on there in a series of twos all the way down the length. Now this is a big one because it, they, they get bigger uh, once they're in the thicker portion of the tentacle. Uh, but then they start to get a little bit smaller as they get towards the tip. So I need to do a bunch of these and then I need to bake them, put them in the oven. And then we're going to look at uh, painting this thing with the latex, okay? And then put the armature in, and then we're going to put it into position. So hang tight, guys. Uh, we're getting there. This is pretty simple. I hope you try it. 
All right, guys, and this is what I got. I made a bunch of suction cups out of Sculpey, um, different shapes and sizes. I'm not going to worry about taking the baby oil to it to remove the fingerprints, which is something that I would normally do. I don't need to because once these are glued onto the tentacle, the entire thing is going to be painted over with latex, which is going to blend it and all and tie it all in, okay? so there's, And it's going to hide blemishes like that. You're just going to be left with a suction cup shape. So I'm going to put these in the oven, and then we're going to move on. Hang tight, guys. And here you go. Some cured Sculpey suction cups, okay? Um, I put them in the oven at 275 for about 25, 30 minutes. And they stick to the bottom, which is fine. I want to leave them on the tray uh, so that they're more manageable. And uh, you can't see it here, but I have an old microphone stand here because what I did was I cut a section of that wire and I fed it through inside. You're going to want to hold it when you punch it through and, and try to feel for the wire inside and guide it through up to the top and I stopped about here because it's pointed on the end it's gonna puncture through so I want to keep a little bit of a gap there and uh, I'll show you how we bend it and everything when we get to that point but I got this rack here because after I get those uh, suction cups uh, glued on I'm going to uh, paint the whole thing with liquid latex and this is a perfect way to do that because the excess is going to drip off. It's going to drip onto the table. This is a plastic table. Uh, if it was, if it fell on the floor like a non-porous uh, surface, it's not going to be a big deal. Once it dries up, you're going to be able to just peel it right off. It's going to come off so easy. But you don't want a rug there. You want to put something on the floor. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get set up for that and. We're going to go ahead and start gluing these suction cups on there. All right, guys, so here we are. At least here's my hands and the tentacle. Uh, you can see it's got some, it's crude. It's got some, like, uh, you know, a texture to it. I could sit there and keep cutting at it, and I could make it super smooth if I wanted to. But like I said, I like these textures, and I think once we get that latex on there, it's it's going to make it look more organic. So it's going to be either this side or this side where I put the suction cups. And I think I'm going to use this side because I have a little groove that where it was undercut a little bit too much. So uh, I think I'm going to be able to hide that a little bit more with some suction cups and pack some uh, uh, latex in there. So. Uh, I got a glue gun. This is one of them tiny cheap ones. I have a bigger better one uh, I'm still organizing in here. So trying to find find my way around Now uh, This is the thick end. This is getting closer to the body this end here. So the tentacles are going to be uh, bigger and then gradually start to get uh, a bit smaller as they go down uh, and like I said, I got my glue gun here. I got some extra glue sticks. Now it's just a matter of going in my tray here and figuring out what I want to use. And I've got some, uh, some big ones. I could probably go with there. All right. And uh, just using a hot glue. Uh, you don't have to worry about all the hot glue, uh, the temperature, or whatever. I, all we're doing this tacking all right so we're not getting all meticulous uh, with this one here as far as how we we glue it down just want to get it on there because that latex is going to really uh, it's gonna make it one is what it's gonna do it's gonna help to taper it in on the sides as well to make it not look like something's glued on there all right, so let's just keep going along. I still have some bigger ones. I'm going to space them out a little bit. Put some hot glue on the bottom. 
glue it on there. Find another one that's about the same size. Oop, gotta get that. Well, this thing here's gone through it quick. This glue gun here. Put that on there. Making sure I'm keeping maintaining a straight line. All right, so I'm just gonna keep going at this, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and glue all of them on there, and then I'm gonna show you what we ended up with. Hang tight. All right, guys. So with all the suction cups on there, I can go ahead and get ready to uh, paint it with the liquid latex, and that's where our little stand here I've got you can't see it but uh, it's a microphone stand it's gonna come in handy when I paint this thing and I got my liquid latex and I poured some in a solo cup and I got a one inch chip brush all right so I'm not gonna need to hang it now I've already painted a little bit on there just to see what what's gonna happen here so all I'm gonna do is just take this and I'm gonna go ahead and do the suction cups first because I want you to see I'm globbing it on there. I'm really sloshing this stuff around those suction cups because uh, that's what's going to bridge the suction cup to the tentacle. Uh, and we want that. We want it to uh, look uniform. We want it to look like it's all one piece. It's not uh, something glued on there. All right, so I'm going to have to do probably a couple of coats of this latex get a good skin on there all right uh, I'm indoors I'm gonna be putting a fan on here in a second uh, latex has ammonia in it I can smell it so you're gonna probably want to be in a good ventilated area and not smelling this stuff too much I can't it can't be good for you so anyways guys I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna keep at this I'm going to paint it down with the latex. I'm going to give it a couple of coats. I'm going to give it a chance to dry. And then we're going to come back and we're going to move on to the next part. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to paint it first before we assemble the rest of this thing and mount it. Or if I do the other piece first, mount this in there and then paint it. Uh, we're going to see here. Uh, I'll figure that out as we get there so anyways guys hang tight little update here um, I've got about two heavy coats on it so far uh, and what I actually did was I laid it down and I actually poured the latex on there and uh, worked it in with the one inch chip brush now I'll tell you if you're not used to working with latex uh, don't use your good brushes don't use your house brushes and stuff like that because they're gonna get gummed up and ultimately you're gonna have to throw it away you can get some of that out with alcohol, but that's why they make chip brushes. You can buy these dime a dozen uh, to avoid the little gummies all throughout. You might want to like use a new brush for each coat. Okay. Uh, one thing I found this thing's top heavy. This thing's heavy now, so uh, because it's only just slipped through uh, with the wire, the weight of it was slid and sliding off the wire. So I ended up like laying it down. Uh, and I'm going to put maybe a few more coats on it. Uh, it needs 24 hours to dry, so uh, that's all I'm going to be able to cover in this episode. When you see this thing next, it's going to be completely uh, latexed, cured, dried, and ready to go, ready to pose. Uh, and then we're going to get into the actual porthole and the uh, bulkhead surrounding it. All right. All right, guys, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and hit that bell. It's going to notify you when I upload future videos. And with, especially with builds like this where it's going to come in a few episodes, you're definitely going to want to get notified when part two comes up. So hit that bell. Um, check out my brothers, uh, Keith from Cobwebs and Candlesticks and uh, Vic Springston from Monster Misfits. Um, and anyways, guys, I appreciate you so much. And until next time, peace.